I know it's dark, but you are watching Burnley College Media. And you will subscribe. You'll find the link below. Uh, good morning and welcome to Burnley College Media. Today, very luckily, we have got Ian Longstaff, who is Valdi. I'll hand you over. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm just going to run you through some slides uh, from my career on Potter. So that's starting with Goblet of Fire and went through to Death of Hallows 1 and 2. I am Voldemort's foot. That will be explained uh, very shortly. Does anybody uh, know what a body double does? Huh? What? You can shout up. Stun, no, well it's technically, um, if you look me up on IMDB, I am down to the stunt double for uh, Voldemort. That's not true, basically Warner Brothers do not credit actual body doubles because they don't like you to know that half of the film wasn't a brave fans, it was me. Um, so I didn't actually do any stunts, there is another stunt Voldy. Um, and then I had a stand in as well, so there's a few people, but on, basically on the main shooting, uh, it was me. That basically means every time that Ray Fiennes is in makeup and they need to be shooting, they can be shooting on me. There's standing in, which is like literally standing in and um, we're in the position, they set the lights up, they work out what they're going to do. But doubling is when they're filming on you, not on him. So it's um, all the shots that glue the scenes together. When you actually start watching things, you realise how many little drop-ins there are. So you're all familiar with um, Voldy, um, the rather uh, angry character as he is there, um, played by Ray Fiennes, and first comes to human form in Goblet of Fire. Uh, blink and you miss it. Those are all the bits that were me joined together um, from the graveyard scene. So. That's me, not him. So that was a shot that was uh, the CGI people came and picked me up off set and said, we need you to do the whole coming out of the cauldron thing. So I said, all right, what would you like me to do? And they said, well, do whatever you want. And if, you, if we like it, we'll keep it in. So there we are. That's another classic hand summoning the dark mark to uh, summon the Death Eaters. <coughs> so all these little um, things, if you, if you watch it back, you realise that all these little drop-ins, um, they don't need an actor for it, for who they're paying thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds a day when they can get somebody like me to do it for hundreds. Uh, and not many of those. And that's taking the mask off a Death Eater. Is anybody familiar with this scene? Yeah. Is it all coming back to you? Good. And this is one of my proudest moments. <laughs> this is the... Uh, the title, uh, uh, I Am Voldemort's Foot, came from this glorious moment, um, a defining moment in my career when I got to stand on Robert Pattinson's head. <laughs> now, we need to stop on this one. That's, I think that's my favourite moment of doubling because uh, when you were, I can't even tell that that's me, not him. It took me ages. Um, well, I knew I'd done the shot, but it just when you look at how it lines up with the, the way that Rafe did it, I spent a lot of time watching the angle of his elbow to get it exactly kind of right. Um, so I'm very proud of that one. Oh, and that's just to prove that I was in it. Um, if you look very carefully, this is what I said about the stunt performance. So that's a whole list of stunt performers. Apart from the last three lines are all body doubles. The rule is you have to have filmed over 50% of the uh, shoot. Uh, to be able to get your name on the credits because apparently it costs them to put it on. So there I am down at the bottom uh, next to Martin Bayfield who was um, Hagrid's double, who was an ex rugby player, about six foot eight or something. That's um, obviously Voldy with a nose, which is basically how I went through the whole of the film because it's all CGI afterwards. You'll be seeing this all magically appear outside um, after we've done it. There. So that was basically, that's Ray Fine's head. Oh, there we go, that's, um, looks like me in the 17th century, but um, those are the tracking markers. So basically the CGI, uh, once you've had your makeup done, they come along with like a, one of those, like a hockey mask that's clear with holes in it, and they put it on your face, and then they put the tracking markers through the holes so that they know they're in the same position every single time. And then the computer knows 
what's happening with the nose. Uh, that's my crew. Um, so it's Paul and Tina, and I've forgotten the uh, name. But um, <laughs> it was a long time ago. Now. This was, so this was, if it was Goblet of Fire, that would have been 2004, I think, we filmed that. But really great people to work with. If anybody's interested in um, like film and TV makeup, um, don't, I mean, hair and makeup, yeah, hair, fair enough, ten a penny. You get on special effects makeup, fantastic. You, this is basically, we were, we were the creatures department. That's the makeup process, so a 22 step makeup process, which normally meant being in the chair at kind of half past five in the morning, which means getting out of bed at half past four in the morning. It takes sort of three and a half to four hours, which is why you have to get up so early in the morning. Um, but a lot of film and TV work involves getting up early in the morning, so um, don't think you can be in film and television and swan in at 10 o'clock, it doesn't happen. So that's me on Deathly Hallows. I was freezing on that, and I had to really, really force that smile. And most of the time on Deathly Hallows, I was freezing because we filmed it. I started in September, and we went right through to February, and I'm wearing a frock. Um, and I'm wearing ballet shoes, which are like paper. And obviously, when you're doing the standing in bit, you're there, so you've got out of your makeup pretty quick, because standing in doesn't involve the full makeup and then you are on set and they're lining up on you. So if the action is that Voldemort is crawling through the dirt, then you have to crawl through the dirt, but you're doing it at six o'clock in the morning. Um, and if it's been raining, it's kind of wet and everything that you're wearing is soaking it up. And you can't wear a hat because it'll ruin the makeup and um, you get very, very cold. Oh, that's me at the premiere uh, with um, one of the Ryan doubles and Tiger, who is uh, Ron Weasley's double. And then now, um, I get bookings as um, a Voldemort lookalike at live events and pop-up cinemas and um, uh, at Halloween. We were at a shopping centre in Staines, uh, fighting with people, basically. Um, so it's great work if you can get it. So that's that for the formal uh, PowerPoint bit, and I think we're going to have a quick reset now. Uh, and um, a bit of a, an interview happening. Hello and welcome to Burnley College. I'm Eleanor Chu. I'm here with Ian Longstaff, also known as Voldy. Oh, yeah. So, obviously, you've worked on the Harry Potter films. Which was your favourite one to film overall? Um, well, I, I mean, I think Death, uh, Goblet of Fire was, was the most exciting because that was the first one that I did. and. Um, it was just the graveyard scene, and um, so it was kind of, it was just very intense, four or five weeks. Um, and everybody was really lovely on it, and it was just like, I'd never done anything like that before. I've been doing extra work before, but I mean, that's obviously when you go onto Potter and you're actually doubling, it's a completely different thing. So I, I think I, my fondest memory is of Goblet of Fire, um, because that was a filmed inside as well, so I wasn't quite as cold. But some of the bits on Deathly Hallows are just, it's like, it's on my mark, I'm blowing up Hogwarts. Obviously, again, you worked with a lot of big names. Who was your favourite to work with? Um, well, my favourite to work with was Danny Radcliffe, because he was just great, and um, all the trio, I mean, obviously, well, all the kids really had, been, had grown up, they think they started when they were 12. So uh, they were all very polite, and he called me sir, and um, it was really lovely. And he, he, he was, I think he was about 17 at the time. I have to ask a question, are you a Harry Potter fan yourself? Um, well, I was a huge Potter fan. When the first book came out, I was like, oh my god, this is brilliant. And um, I remember going to Platform 9 and 3 quarters in King's Cross and being very upset that there wasn't a Platform 9 and 3 quarters. And I'm thinking, what's wrong with network rail that they haven't you know there's the platform nine there's platform 10 there's nothing here and um uh, which of course there is now um so I, I was i was just knocked out by it and and then i don't think i really read much of the others before because i was i was traveling and doing all sorts of things uh, did you ever keep in touch with any of the other cast members yeah um, well not cast members because that's their kind of the tier above i mean i'm in touch with all the all the doubles had a great crew of doubles all the doubles just happened to be lovely people so I'm still in touch. In fact, Juliet, I'm going down. To, I'm calling in to see her on the way south this week. Um, and Ian, who was the Snape double, I saw him when we were down in Staines. What was one of your most defining moments within your career, other than maybe Harry Potter? Other than Potter, um, 
a good question. I mean, basically, when you're doing background work and you're doing extra work, which is what I was um, kind of doing before, um, there aren't any defining moments, really, because you're just in the background and literally can just be walking through a shop. Um, and so you, it's not the sort of thing that you ring your mum and say, oh, I'm going to be on telly tonight, watch it. So I had one or two things that I really enjoyed, which um, there used to be a, a cop show called The Bill. It's probably still on UK Gold or whatever. And I did, there was a sequence, um, I did two episodes in The Bill where um, Linda Bellingham was a crime boss. You know the Oxo one? Yes. Yeah, going way back. Um, she was a crime boss and I was her heavy and driver with my mate Tommy. And um, so we were just like wearing black all the time and driving around in a Mercedes and it was really fantastic. So stuff like that really sticks with you. Um, and finally, if you could offer one piece of advice to anyone wanting to join the industry, what would it be? I mean, if you're talking about the entertainment industry um, across the board, because if you're an actor, you can be a presenter and a voiceover and a model um, and all these, you know, there are various things. And, and you're as well having as many different uh, strings to your bow as possible because you're very unlikely to um, earn a living out of just one of them. Um, but I think the main overriding thing is that you have to find your passion. You have to find the one thing that is going to get you out of bed in the morning and you're going to be excited about and you would actually do whether they were paying you or not. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we're going to go on to questions from the audience. Questions from the audience? Yep. How many hours a day? Do you How many hours a day? Um, you can do 12 hours, well you can do 10 hours, you can do 12 hours, you can do 14 hours. Um, it's a long day when you're in that amount of makeup because obviously you start very early in the morning. What's the worst career decision you've ever made? Um, well apart from coming here. Um, <laughs> Um, the worst career decision I've ever made was to be doing a job that I wasn't interested in doing at all and not getting out of it soon enough and it was nothing to do with being in the film industry. What work were you doing before Harry Potter? Um, well I was, doing, I was doing extra work which is how I kind of got the gig um, but uh, I was also doing freelance journalism and um, I was doing a bit of performing as well so, and this was all in London so and you kind of, it, London's so expensive you have to have a few different things and uh, spin a few plates, so um, it wasn't all acting by any stretch. What other, other films besides Harry Potter find as a body double? Um, I've not done doubling in any other film, um, and most of the stuff I was in wasn't, uh, was more sort of TV shows really, but I, was, I had a part in, a uh, very small part in Basic Instinct 2, and then I was in Children of Men as well, which is a really, really good film. Uh, what advice would you give to your younger self? What advice would I give to my younger self? Um, Stop pretending that um, any kind of mainstream job is going to interest you and don't ever, ever, ever sit in an office wearing a suit again. What was the best part of your Harry Potter experience? There's so many best parts. It's like there's all little bits joined together. And, but one of, the, one, of the, the ones that, one of the ones that always springs to mind is that we were going to run through a scene with the director. Um, so they came in the morning and they just said, oh, they're going to run that scene, here's the script. Um, it'll be when the main unit's finished, so it could be any time. So just like be on standby. Um, and if it gets to too late tonight, uh, we'll bring pizza down. So it did get to too late tonight. So this is on Order of the Phoenix. There's me and... Um, the other two doubles, we had Dumbledore and Harry double, and uh, I think Bellatrix double, and we were all in the Ministry of Magic, running the scene with the director, the producer, the heads of department, having pizza as well, and it's like, it just doesn't get any better than this. Who's the best actress or actor you work with? Um, who's the best? Well, I mean, to give Ray Fiennes his due, he is absolutely brilliant as an actor. I had to watch every single take because he changed every single take. And he had a range that he went through which started out at quite quiet, sort of creepy uncle. And then he took it through to full, like, screaming banshee Voldy. And, and there was shades within that. So I, I had to know which, because in six weeks time when they want me to replicate that, I have to know which shade of Voldy, 50 shades of Voldy. I have to know which one I'm doing. Um, so he is awesome to watch in that sense. Uh, what was the funniest thing to happen on set? With Potter, it involved some of the main actors and um, 
not coming out of their caravans because they were watching DVDs, <laughs> uh, which was slightly dubious. Which scene took the most takes? Um, it was all that um, courtyard stuff. Um, there was lots and lots and lots of takes uh, of that. Um, and the big thing where he's where he's he's kind of triumphant and he's come back into the courtyard and, and um, all his opposition are defeated in front of him. That was quite a long speech. It's not actually as long in the movie as it was in the script. Um, so there, there was lots of different versions of that um, and kind of from all different angles. So would you become a director? I'd love to direct. That would be the thing that um, I because I, I kind of you get a sense of it. Uh, when you're working um, and you're on set. And this, this is a reason to just be on set doing anything. It doesn't matter if you think you're not getting paid or you're not doing what you really want to do. Just get on a set and see how it all works because there's a very kind of specific way in which it works. Um, but directing is my thing um, that I, I'm yet to do. I've done quite a bit of script writing, so I've kind of got that side of it. And I have a friend who uh, I grew up with who's a Hollywood film director called Wash Westmoreland. Um, who's just done a Netflix thing called The Earthquake Bird, I think it is, um, if anyone's seen that. Um, and he directed Still Alice and um, the uh, thing with Kira Knightley in called Colette. Um, and it looks like we might be going to work together uh, in the future, which is very, very exciting. Uh, but yeah, directing, or well, it'd be co directing, I suppose, but just. Because I'm, I come from a writing background, it's basically about storytelling. And when you're the director, you can, you, you, it's up to you how you want to tell the story, which is very exciting. Some say he's the Dark Knight's evil twin. Rumour has it, his toenails grow ten times faster than a normal human. It's Valdi, and he's playing the pool table challenge. Thank you very much. Right. Nails out the way. What's the weirdest question you've ever been asked? That one! <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite film? My favourite documentary is, of course, The Deathly Hallows Part 1, where I was doing rather well. What do unicorns taste like? Uh, a bit like chicken. <laughs> Uh, which do you prefer, Spielberg or Tarantino? Uh, well, definitely Tarantino, obviously. Although I thought it should have been called Kill Harry. <laughs> Any hobbies other than being the Dark Lord? Like, what do you do during your pastime? Uh, well, knitting can you know, calm me down. And um, obviously liquidising babies for breakfast. <laughs> oh, did you not know that? Come on, where have you been? This is Burnley after all. <laughs> <laughs> Trying not to lose the nail. What's your favourite line from the film? Fa my favourite line from? Harry Potter. From the Potters. Well, I quite like in Goblet of Fire, there's a key moment in the Goblet of Fire in the graveyard when Harry runs away from me, um, as he should be. And my line was, Don't you turn your back on me, Harry Potter! I want you to look at me when I kill you! I want to see the light! Leave your eyes! And that's one I had to do over and over and over again because Daniel Radcliffe just couldn't get it right. <laughs> do you have any hidden talents? Well, I think pool isn't one of them. <laughs> um, How do you spend your Saturday night? My Saturday nights are spent clubbing. If you were stranded on a desert island, what three things would you take with you? What three things would I take with me? Right, well, one would be Bellatrix. <laughs> Two would be the Michael Bublé Christmas album. <laughs> and thirdly, um, I would take the Burnley College Prospectus 2020. <laughs> and work out what course I'm going to do next year <laughs> if the evil lording thing doesn't come off. I've got one. Have you? Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, what is your favourite video game villain? A video game villain? Well, I'm not really into the video games. Unless... Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> what do you prefer, 
Coronation Street or EastEnders? Uh, well, it has to be Coronation Street, doesn't it? I mean, EastEnders full of those whining southerners all the time. Good grief. <laughs> we got another queue, Have I not? A... We got another queue. Have I got another queue? Yeah. Um, are you insinuating that this one's no good? <laughs> no, no, I'd just like to have a game with you, innit? Well, I'll get a fetch one of your own. I think that's probably <laughs> I don't have one. Oh, you better use this one. <laughs> All you need to do is pot a ball and we can carry on this whole facade. <laughs> <laughs> what acting? I think you'll find that Spartacus. It's a different film altogether. That was <laughs> I don't, I don't know You've why you... You've been practising here. Um, I've not practised at all. Uh, well done. Give him a round of applause. Oh, thank you. So, is, is there a question that you'd like to ask this gentleman, since he's just potted a ball? No. How old are you? 17. All right. <laughs> all right then. I don't know. What made you well, get in the ring with Voldemort? Yeah. I, was, I felt I had to challenge you. Did you? Yeah. Okay. I didn't have a groom. Cocky seat. little sh**. <laughs> 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 Have you uh, ever played pool before? Um, well, you've rather found me out, actually. Um, although, there were, I was just about to prove how good I was. And see, look at that. That ended up in the middle and it was over there. <laughs> um, I mean, I did have one or two drunken nights in uh, Hogsmeade as Tom, but uh, that's another lifetime altogether. Who's your favourite Sith Lord? Oh, come on, double it off the top. <laughs> oh, come on, I'm getting into it now. See, there's only the dark ball left. <laughs> the best that's, glass. that's what I like. <laughs> yeah! Well done, Thank you very much. How do you think you've done? Um, well, a bit shaky to start with, then um, okay at the end, I think. Okay, so we've got our lead board here. And now then, <laughs> um, I understand that there haven't been too many other <laughs> guests <laughs> uh, as, we, as we stand. Um, I'll overlook the fact that I know that information and I'll feel very smug and pleased with myself. So thank you very much to Burnley College. At last I am first at something. <laughs> So uh, you potted the balls in uh, 37 shots. 37 shots, oh, excellent. Oh, yeah. Record. It's a record. It's a record. It's a record. It's a record.